take self care. It's very important. We're talking about that a little bit tonight this morning. But self care is so important because your mental health, you should never sacrifice your mental health for any person. Amen. 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 Let me say that again. You should never sacrifice your mental health. I don't care if it's for your mama, your daddy, your kids, your best friend, your husband, your wife. Never sacrifice your mental health because once you lose that, it's hard to get back. Amen? Amen. 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 But listen, God has a word today. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to stand because I'm going to go through a couple of different scriptures. Uh, But I'm mainly going to be hanging around Luke chapter 23. I'm going to be hanging around Luke chapter 23. I'm going to be hanging around John 19. Luke 23. So everything, I got four verses coming out of Luke 23. I got one coming out of John 19. Amen. Amen. And today I just want to talk to you and you who are watching uh, via Facebook Live. I want to talk about how to continue ministry in the midst of suffering. How to continue ministry in the midst of suffering. Let me, let me kind of put a pen in, in, in a, in an understanding that we are in a situation, not just a pandemic, because of COVID. Mm-hmm. But there's been another pandemic or epidemic that's been circling way before the pandemic. Because the reality is, Brother Brown, that people have stopped going to church mm-hmm. before the pandemic hit. Mm-hmm. Um, but what we must understand and be clear is, is that many people have lost, left the institution or the organization or the building or the structure. But the reality is we all know that the church is us. Yes. Amen. 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 And I think we have to be careful because many times we are looking at people who have lost, left the structure or organization. But the reality is just because I left your building, didn't mean I ever left the church. Amen. Amen. Because the reality, a lot of times, the, the, the building is in, in the structure of the organization that we call church is usually attached to doctrine, rules, and regulation and people. But the church that uh, uh, we should be attached to is the church that is united with hand in hand with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. But what I want to talk about is, is that there are some individuals who have left the structure or, or left the organization that we call church. But the reality, many of them have left themselves. In other words, not only that they, because of their suffering, because people have treated them badly, because of things, the circumstances that happen in life, because of situations and sin, not only have many of us have disconnected ourselves from the building. But we have disconnected ourselves from the kingdom. And what we must understand is that that God has something. When he called you and saved you, he has something special just for you. There was something that God had put inside of you that was just for you to be a blessing to the kingdom. But because you have walked away because of your suffering, because you walked away because of your hurt and your pain, Someone is not getting what they need that they need from you. And what happens is some of us, we think that, they're, Pastor, you got it. There's other preachers out there. There, there are other people that can help. But let me explain something to you. God created you uniquely. There, there's something, a ministry that is inside of you that only you can actually do. And what happens is because of the things that happen in our lives, we chose to run from it, and ministry never happened. And what we must understand is that that God has put you on this place for a purpose. And when your purpose is not being done, I I get it and I understand that that one monkey don't stop the show. The show must go on. But sometimes the show is just not right if the right person is not in. As a matter of fact, let me talk to somebody. Uh, If if you're a fan of the Fresh Prince, they tried to change Unveil. And we looked at that and yeah, they might have replaced Unveil, but it just wasn't. It wasn't the same. Uh, I remember my family died and they had the nerve to replace the mama. Uh, and, and I had an issue with that those last couple of episodes. But what you have to understand is that when you are missing 
from the equation. We may replace you. We may put somebody else in your spot. But guess what? It's still not the same. Because you matter. Many of us are suffering, and, and we're suffering through whatever our situations are, and we decide not only to quit the institution of church, but sometimes to walk away from God. Amen. And the reality is, let me explain something to you. I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm not trying to be uh, hard, but the reality is, is that ministry has to supersede your suffering. Mm -hmm. Because there are too many people in this world who are depending on you. You might not know who they are. Mm -hmm. They may never come speak to you. Mm -hmm. They may never say, hey, what you've done for them. But the reality is there's somebody that you are inspiring with your life. Even if it's one person, if you can touch one person, you have done enough. But the reality, too many of us are quitting ministry, walking out on ministry, turning our back on ministry, all because of the things we're going through. And the problem is, is that everybody wants the resurrection of Jesus, but nobody wants to suffer with Jesus. Everybody wants the blessings of God, but nobody wants to go through some things. No, and we have come into a generation, a society, that no one wants to pick up their cross anymore. In other words, we are too busy to come help somebody. We have gotten so used to throwing stones that we forgot we're supposed to be carrying crosses. Carrying the cross, you ain't got you don't have much enough time to throw stones at anybody else. Can, can I help somebody stop throwing stones and pick up your cross? Because you can't do two of them, you can do a one or the other. But how do I deal with ministry? How do I deal with the call of God? And one of the greatest sufferings in our text, the greatest sufferings in our Bible that no one will be able to suffer. I know we bring up Job. We bring up other individuals in the Bible. But let me explain something to you. Job did not suffer like Jesus Christ. Job did not get punished like Jesus Christ. You might be saying, well, Job had sores. He, he, he lost everything. But, but unless you take it on the burdens and the sins of the world and got beat for nothing, you haven't suffered through Christ. But the one thing we learned through Christ, not only did Christ come on this earth to teach us how to live, but he also came on this earth to teach us how to suffer, how to do ministry to suffer, and how you can still be successful even in the midst of your pain. Yeah. Thank you. uh, Luke 23, we find in Luke 23, Jesus is uh, getting beaten. He has taken on the world and the burden of sin. By this time, Jesus had been stripped of his deity, and now he is 100% man. He is now prepared to give his life, and they're beating him, they're whooping him. And the Bible says that he didn't say a mumbling word. But the reality is when Jesus started suffering, when he finally decided to speak, he also spoke life. In other words, in the midst of him dying, he continued to speak life in the other people. And we need more saints like that, even in the midst of your suffering, even in the midst of your pain, when you open your mouth, are you sending curses or blessings? In other words, that, that just because I'm suffering doesn't mean I have to take it out on you and get to help somebody. Don't, don't you hate when you come to work and somebody got an attitude, you got an attitude, because you had a bad day at the house, don't bring no issues at the house, oh, let me help somebody. See, the problem is going on in many of our churches, people are miserable at their child, they're miserable at home, and they come to church to try to take it out on you. The yeah. devil is a lie. Get right. yourself yeah. together. Yeah. No matter what you're going through, there still should be blessings inside of you yeah. because God woke you up this yeah. morning. Yeah. Uh, the first thing you want to do to continue ministry in the midst of suffering, look at Luke 23, verse 28. As Jesus was carrying his cross to Calvary, he looks at the women, the women were weeping, and he says, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. When you're going through suffering, stop letting people stop create a pity party around you. Mm -hmm. Quit looking for people to empathize and sympathize with you. Okay. Start letting people know, listen, listen, there's a whole lot of wrong situations. Because when Jesus was telling me, yes, I'm going through something. But y'all about to go through something else. Y'all about to go through something worse. Always remember, somebody is going through something worse than you. You don't have to cry for me. You don't have to be pity for me. I'm okay. I'm all right. As a matter of fact, I, I God has given me a uh, to see into your own life that you may need to be crying because you got some of your own issues. And sometimes you
you got to let folk know, listen, you ain't got time to be messing with my issue. You need to start dealing with your concern. Why do we expect people to help us with our marriages when their marriage is all jacked up? Why do we expect people to help us with our children and give us advice about our children and their children all to up? No, baby, you don't have to cry for me. You don't have to work to pray for me, but you don't have to worry about me. I'm going to be all right because guess what? There's some things in store for your life that you need to focus on because God already has me. Don't, don't tell people, don't worry about me. I'm good. good. See, I think the problem is we take too many phone calls. We want an audience. We want to tell everybody our problems. We want everybody to feel sorry for us. And the problem is it is not about you. Your suffering is about not about you, but for God to get the glory. And in ministry, if you want to do ministry, it's all about other people and not about you. Let's skip over to John 19 before we come back. Another way to do ministry is one, let people know, hey, listen, listen, you need to worry about yourself. I'm more concerned about you than my situation. But in um, John chapter 19, verse 26, he looks over at his mother and says, woman, behold thy son. And one of Jesus' responsibilities was, as a man, was to take care of his mother. When you are suffering, in the midst of suffering, the one of the best ways to continue to do ministry is that you still have to take care of your responsibilities. Even when things are not going right, you have a family. That is your first ministry. Amen? That is your first ministry. And too many of us, because of the situation we're going through, because of our problems, we try to put our families on the back burner. We don't, we don't take care of our spouses. We don't take care of our children. And then we have this, woe is me. You know you're supposed to be up cooking and cooking preference to take care of the house, but you laying up in the bed worrying about what's going on. You know you're supposed to go to work because you got bills, but you won't go to work. Sometimes you got to get over yourself. Because ministry, let me tell you something, no matter what what you're going through, them kids still got to eat. Uh, people still got to eat. The house still has to be clean. Listen, those bills don't care about that you went through a depression for a couple of months. Sometimes you got to get yourself together, look in the mirror, say, listen, I got to shape up. Because even though I'm suffering, I still have a family to take care of. I still have responsibilities. Responsibilities at work. People, because at the end of the day, you never know, people are depending, I don't care who you are, Amen. where you are on the, on the chain, or, or someone is depending on you. Amen. Take care of your responsibilities. Go up, go to work. Amen. Pay your bills. Amen. Take care of the people around you. If you are in ministry, take care of the ministry. If you're responsible being a deacon preacher, do what you're supposed to do. The reality is when you have a responsibility, to do that. It doesn't matter whether, you, whether you're a musician, whether you sing. It doesn't matter. Let me tell you something. I've had some trials in my life. I had some tribulations. I had people talk about me. I had rumors spread about me. But guess what I'm going to do every Sunday morning? I'm going to mount the pulpit and I'm going to preach. And I'm going to of what people are saying about me. Regardless of how I feel that day, God has given me a responsibility. And the team, I can so say, I'm not going to mess with my sit and hear people tell me, I used to be a preacher. How did you used to be a preacher? Either you're a preacher or you're not. You can't quit preaching. Matter of fact, Jeremiah said he tried to quit preaching, but it was like fire. Shut up in your phone. You can't quit. God has given you something on this side and never can quit the person. Uh, Luke 23. So not only you want to you want to tell people, don't worry about me. I got this. Take care of your responsibility. Listen, what you got to learn how to do if you want to be able to do ministry in the midst of suffering. He said in verse 34, Father, forgive them. Amen. For they know not what they do. You got to learn how to forgive, y'all. Yeah. You cannot do ministry effectively yeah. if you don't know how to forgive. All in all, can I share with you? Yeah. Can I testify? Can I testify? Yeah. Listen, I've been doing ministry for about 22 years now. And you know how many times I had to go pray for somebody at the hospital and I know they hated me. You know how many times I had to lay hands on people when I know they talked about me and my entire family. Every now and then in order for you to really do a ministry, you cannot be mad or angry with folk all the time. Quit hanging on to that stuff and learn how to forgive. And really what you got to understand, that apology is not required in order for you to forgive. Now, now don't get me wrong, y'all. Don't get me wrong, trust folks. I'm required to forgive you even if you don't apologize, but I don't have to be friends. 
bring it to you anymore. Let's kill you on college, y'all. Let's Like ain't nothing happened. 
Yeah. Yeah. I ain't that guy. <laughs> and, and don't, don't mistake that as me not forgiving you. It's just the fact that we just ain't going to continue to have a conversation and you ain't going to talk about what you need. All right. Amen. 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 If you don't like it, pray for me. I, I ain't perfect. <laughs> Pastor, you ain't supposed to be like that. You supposed to be the pastor. You supposed to be saved. Last time I checked, we got the same standards. Think of other people. But last, listen, listen, listen. Because this is what we're going to have to do. And if you do, make sure you can listen to yourself. Verse 46 says, Jesus cries out with a loud voice and says, Father, to your hand, I can get my spirit. Sometimes, you just got to let some stuff go. If you really want to do ministry and be successful at it, you have to let some stuff go. You literally got to give it to God. Jesus had gotten to the place where he was tired of suffering. He was tired of dying. And he committed. Hey, listen, when you let it go, you know that means you're still in charge of the situation. It don't mean they, it doesn't mean they won. It don't mean they got the best of you. You just let the side of guess what? To let it go. Yeah. And I've gotten a place in my life, and I see so many people in ministry can't do the ministry. But why you don't sing anymore? Why you don't preach anymore? Why you don't do the great things that God has called you to? Because they're hanging on to what somebody did or what's going on in their lives. Yeah. 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 I know so many people who have quit ministry, yeah. not just because of what happened in the church, because of what they're attached to. Some people are hooked on drugs. Some people are hooked on. Uh, porn, porn, uh, porn, all kind of stuff. Amen. You got to learn how to let that stuff go and put it in God's Amen. hands. Amen. Let it go. Amen. Let it go. No matter where you was at before, you don't see the problem is I think some of us don't let stuff go because we think it's going to change. And one thing I discovered is some people will never change. Amen. Amen. Some people are never going to give you an apology. Amen. Some people ain't going to never think they did anything wrong to you. There are some things that you're fighting with that God is not going to get rid of. Let me help you. See, so you like you're trying to figure out this struggling from depression, and God won't take it from me. Why am I struggling with this? Because guess what? Sometimes God will give you a thorn because He wants to keep you humble. Sometimes what you're going through, God says, "Listen, I put this on you because if I know if I take it from you, you're gonna be acting bigger than what you really are." You remember when Paul said, "Lord, I got a thorn in my side," and He said, "My grace is sufficient for you." In other words, that whatever you're going through, some stuff you just gotta, you know what? It is what it is. Uh, let me tell you so. When I got to the place when I said, you know what, I ain't tripping about, you know, I ain't never really tripped about being broke. I didn't like it. But when you get to a place, it is what it is. Let me explain something to you. When you can tell somebody not to live from that, it, I had no problem telling somebody, look, I'll get you on the first. And no, I didn't have them on the first. Uh, you keep calling all you want. I ain't going to ask them. I agree. We all, if you want to come get the car, come get it. I hope you find it. <laughs>
preachers, when you decide I'm not preaching anymore and I'm not sharing the gospel so nobody can be blessed, you're taking your ball home. That is childish. And it's not being connected to the king. Because yeah, here's my, let me, let me help you. Because just because yes, you can't play basketball on that court, Amen. don't mean there's no other course that will be Just because you cannot do your tip at that church that you grew up into, that your mama name is on the pew. Oh, yeah. 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 If your mama name on the pew is that important, get a screwdriver with nobody to try. <laughs> Listen, we can't really do the walking down the aisle thing uh, because of COVID, but on the back, 
of your chairs. We have a QR C code. If you'd like to be a part of Disciples Ministry, click that thing, take a picture of it, send us an email. Listen. Also, if you don't have a smartphone, you got that flip phone. That's cool too. <laughs> it's cool too. Just let me know, and we can make sure you be a part of this ministry. We're doing some great things uh, that I'm proud of. Okay, two weeks ago, last week, uh, we delivered over 5,000 individual diapers, 13,000 diapers. We're going to go to our cereal giveaway. We're going to give away boxes of cereal. Uh, last year, we did 100 families, man. Listen, we're not doing 100 times this year, but y'all think we can do it? Y'all think we can do 150? Y'all think we can do 150? We just want to change the location. We can do 150. We can do 150. Amen. I'm not going to say if we can. We can do 150. Amen. We do the real sin. We do frosty flakes and fruit. Listen, listen, I grew up on generic cereal and I was used to eat generic cereal. I'm not a generic. Nothing. Amen. So I'm not going to I'm not going to give anybody anything that I want. So I'm going to get into what about the sugar? They ain't my kids. So let's not get all complicated. Look, look. Uh, you don't want your baby eating Fruit Loops and Frosty Flakes, and I figure ain't nothing wrong with them giving to them at school. So, amen. So, listen, we just want to be a blessing. That will be in August. That will be in August. I'll get you more in tune. Also, fifth Sunday, uh, fifth Sunday, we will be celebrating our graduates, our high school graduates. We're going to give them a little love on amen. fifth Sunday. I will be putting out Zach. I think we're going to be at Yao Meadow Park, depending on the weather, our, our, our strategy defense, because it's still kind of cold at night. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So it's still kind of cold at night. So this this we we play that by ear, but we still got this room. But we will be celebrating. So you have listen. You don't have to be a member or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. this church. Amen. So you connected. You've been here. You came mm -hmm. here one Sunday. Your baby's in high school, and they need some. Just, just let me know. We got it. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. We can't bury you at the holiday, and so <laughs> uh, and lastly, listen, listen. If you want to give tithe, we have our black box in the back. We would love for you to give plant seed into our ministry. Uh, we're doing some great things. I'm telling you, we're doing some great things. Got some greater things uh, in store. Uh, I think, matter of fact, I ain't even mentioned. Praise be to God. I think um, what's the thing here? Um, Kenya, Kenya, Kenya. A uh, couple of months, I think right before Easter, we fed for breakfast. We, we could do some Chick fil A or whatever. So we need to do some different stuff uh, within the community, man, because no matter what, ministry goes on. Amen. Okay. Ministry okay. goes on, even in the midst of suffering, man, okay. even with wow. people. And, and I'm sharing, because I'm going to put them okay. Even because I'm, I'm just torn, because a lot of people have poured into me the last couple of weeks. Uh, people suffering, people dealing with rumors, people talking about them, man. Mm. And, and, and here's the thing about rumors. Character always outweighs and outlasts the rules about you. Amen. Be a person of character. Amen. Live character. Don't let people talk about you. In other words, when people talk about you, there should be something about you that people say, no, are you sure? Because you ain't talking about that person. Amen. 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 So when you have, when you live a life of character, let's say you're going to be perfect. Live a life of character. There are certain things people can't say about you. If you say, hey, Pastor Slayer, you see Pastor Slayer was a bunch of women, most people will say, you lying. You ain't saying Pastor Slayer. Now, yeah. you say, well, I heard Pastor Slayer drive by this in Tupac and Biggie, then that's probably true. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably true. Yeah. Well, other than if you yeah. see me in Bingo, you probably yeah. probably true. Yeah. Hey, man, I was mad to have you there. Hey, yeah. me and yeah. Mary didn't win nothing. The preacher won $500 last week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You can't come down here no more. Come on, let's get out of here. 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 Listen, listen, please, um, if you got the time, uh, celebrate me. We get some snacks, man. I can't eat all that stuff by myself. Man, I don't eat pudding, cakes, and, uh, pizzas, and bread, puddings. And, man, I don't eat so much. Man, y'all, somebody needs to start a business that ain't got nothing to do with food. Ain't no sauce. Ain't no sauce. I think I ordered a pizza. Man, I tore that pizza up, man. Man, pizza. <laughs> pizza, no, I got to know something. Thank you, Mary. She makes homemade pizzas. Oh, yeah. I think I ate half a piece of pizza.
sorry before he left. Yes. Yeah, he was say, God bless you. Come on, let's get out of here. Father God, I love you. Thank you. Just for being so awesome. We ask you to continue to bless everyone that's in this place. Touch everyone. Father God, we thank God for our graduates. Yes. I praise God for them, Father God. We pray for their journey, their future journey. We pray for their relationships, Father God, who they intertwine with, who they hang out with while they're in college and they go to whatever their destination is going to be. That you cover them all in the name of Jesus, Father God. We pray for every parent in the house. Father God, we pray for every person who is dealing with some type of suffering, some type of issue in their life, somebody spreading rumors about them, somebody talking about them, somebody mistreating them. Father God, we ask you to lift them up amidst of all that trash, Father God. And we will give those demons in the name of Jesus. Father God, may the grace of your spirit as we communion of your Holy Spirit. Rest with the body henceforth, now and above. Amen. Amen. Before you go, before you go, before you go, we got one more thing. I'm sorry. We got to be communion. Amen. Amen. So, I'm going to ask Deacon Richards to come on up. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry. Um, so we're going to ask him. Thanks. Give us a little something. Give us a little something. Give us a little something. Amen. 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 Amen.